What are you putting in? Oh, hey, Crispy Tubers. Welcome to the to Cook Eat Life. Uh, I'm Ben Crisps, your boy. I'm just putting together a little 4th of July scenario here. You know, we're trying to get patriotic. So I'm putting together a base for, for the meat that I'm going to cook. Uh, starting with a with a, a base of kosh, Morton's coarse kosher salt. I got these uh, chili New Mexico Molito, uh, and I threw in a little bit of garlic powder just to just to get it going. But we're gonna I think the the bulk of this boy is gonna be the pasilla chili, and that's gonna make this real earthy, real dis, real distinguished. Uh, I'm just gonna pour about equal parts. Uh, one, 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 three. We're gonna mix this up, and this is probably gonna be good for about a uh, pound and a half, two pounds of carne asada. Oh, uh, then we're gonna go with a separate style on, other, <laughs> on the other. Hey, crispy tubers. Decide. Smell that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now you're just gonna wallaby that on. We like to call this wallabying. It's gonna be way too close. That's just fine with me. So we're gonna we're gonna freedom press this meat down real free, real nice, real powerful, you know, hegemonically, uh, inheriting the empire from the British. And then we're gonna take, we're gonna, we're gonna. Put it on the other side, and we're gonna we're gonna. Remember how much of this we cut? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I I know. I'm just giving you content to cut out. Look, I'm. <laughs> I need you to learn to <laughs> learn to distinguish between good jokes and bad jokes. We've been leaving a lot of the bad ones in, cutting the good ones out. So round two, you know, it's gonna make it real spicy, but I'm running out of cayenne. This is a disaster on a, on a spicy American holiday like today. You know, how do you how do you do justice to the spiciness that is the American blend of? By the way, let's just make this clear. There's nothing more American than a freaking carne asada feast. Nothing more American than tacos on the Fourth of July. So what would I do if I wanted to really, really spice things up for round three, right? So uh, the other rounds were mostly salt, garlic powder, and then two kinds of chili. One of them, one of them included a bunch of cayenne, right? So, but for round three, if I'm going to have three different varieties, we're going to put pea powder, pea protein powder, on the carne asada. There's nothing more American than pea protein powder on your carne asada. Protein that bitch up. Protein. <laughs> to the ceiling. I'm gonna get smell this flavor. Take a look at the clumps. That's the clumps are gonna make this a really, really uh, robust American experience. What's up, crispy tubers? It's your boy Ben Crisps up here at the grill. You're gonna want to put these bastards all on medium, maybe a little higher than medium, but we're 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 in the medium range. And you want to take your your carne asada meat flaps and you're gonna toss them on that grill. Spread it out. Make sure it's got that real coverage. Covering. You want to have. You want to have. You want it to cover as much surface area as it can, which sounds counterintuitive because you're like, oh, I want to put all my carne asada on the grill at once. Yeah, sure, you might want to. The point is, you want your. You want it to grow flat because you want it to grill even. Oh, but I like some of it. I like some of it not so even, not so cooked, and some of it super cooked. Okay, well figure out where's hot on your grill, and where's not. Figure that out. Do it that way. Or, or just take them off earlier or later. I got extra carne asada in the bowl here. I ain't putting it on, even though I got extra room on the grill. Because I know that these spots here aren't as hot. They're not going to do what I want it to do, which is to crisp up and also cook inside. And when this is ready, flip it. See that? Okay, now I wanna make a point about this. 
You've got the you've got the charry stuff there, less charry there. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep this end charry, and this end's gonna be less charry. Crunchy outside, juicy inside, soft, delicious carne asada. All right, this one's right. So we're gonna go. Wow! Holy moly! Look at that. Is that America or is that America? I'm telling you right now. Disinfecting your choppers. You always want to disinfect your choppers. I'm grilling some of that carne asada in these you American just, flag short shorts. Now, if this you is just leave America, this other meat out to. Uh, oh, it's cooking. And, it's and cooking spoil. itself right now. It's, this is this is cooking still. This is how this works. Uh, I made these a little more rare, a little more juicy. These are going to be the more rare slices. These are going to be the more well done slices. I did that, actually I chose that based on a number of factors. But the primary factor is laziness. America, America, gosh, have his grace on thee, and wrap thy meat in corn tortillas. Because corn is really cheap. Hey, crispy tubers, it's your boy Ben Crisps. We're doing a little cookout here, Fourth of July. Getting this America all set up. Carne asada, meaning Carne meat asada. on fire. Oh yeah. You want to? Here's what you want to do about your fire. You want to have yourself a little handy shooter thing. Pow, pow, and it's done. Fantastic. You kind of want to miss the meat with that, but you. You want to have a couple of these bastards that are really, really cooked, because some people like it crispy. The next one will work for sure. Yeah. Catchphrase. Hey, crispy tubers. Your boy Ben Crisps here, just grilling up some husk corn. It's going to be a great day here. Uh, Catching corn, putting them on the grill, having a good time. Fourth of July, nothing like it in the world. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to cook corn. I could go through the hundreds of ways. But a lot of people like to do it husked. Do it in the husk. It retains the juices a little better. You don't get the char on the corn itself. But what you do get is you get a lot of juiciness. And then you dress it afterward. So this is one of the many ways to do corn. But how do you know when a husked corn is ready? I mean, what the heck, right? So here's how you do this. You can take one of these bad boys, and then you're gonna you're gonna dig into the husk just a little bit. Now you're gonna touch it with your finger. If that if that thing is if it's soft, if it's squishy, if you'd like to eat it, it's ready. Thank you.